Warlords, Raj here. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. I'm Raj, joined by Terry. How, how's it going, Terry? It's going good, Raj. How about yourself? Uh, pretty darn good. We've worked through uh, some technical stuff here. I don't want to jinx <laughs> it, but uh, hopefully we'll be good here on out. And uh, you've agreed to come on, share your knowledge uh, about the Mongols. Um, now, this is the the first time we're we're seeing you, your your, your lovely face on the show. So I, <laughs> you know, we should uh, figure out a, a a little bit about you. So you're from Chicagoland area, is that right? That is correct. I'm uh, down in Chicago. And uh, how long have you been playing Saga? Uh, actually, I started Saga. I want to say late 2018. Okay. So so going on four years now. But uh, you're an enthusiastic player, getting out there to pretty much every event that, that I'm aware of. Uh, the tra- everyone... Traveling Warlords, it's hard for me to miss. Uh-huh. You know, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to rack up the, the title there. That Monty yeah, was giving uh, you're definitely in contention there for, for Traveling Warlord. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're up in, up in your skills. You came in uh, uh-huh. second at Fimble Winter, or you're, on, you're fighting on the top table. At Fimble yeah, Winter. it was second, second at Fimble Winter. Um, the Mongols themselves mm-hmm. took took third in the Age of Melee at Adepticon, and uh, was it second last weekend in uh, All Father Age yeah, of Magic? Playing Age yeah. of Magic, but you got got some chops, and uh, yeah, I think just getting out there playing the the good players in the area will increase your skills pretty darn quick. That and some good dice rolls. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll that'll always do it. So. Um, you played Mongols at Fimble Winter, and um, did you get a lot of games in before then? Um, is this... I think I had, I think I had two. Let me think, maybe three or four games in before before Fimble Winter. Okay, mm-hmm. with, with the Mongols. Um, and then I believe that was uh, those previous games were before the FAQ change on the. On the drummer, yeah, which which is a big big key mm-hmm. to the Mongols, I, I feel. And then Fimble Winter, I, I got to play with that changes, so all good there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Fimble Winter, Adepticon were both all all ages events, so uh, yeah. you could have could have ran into anything. And uh, yeah, so I think you're the right guy to talk about the Mongols. <laughs> see see how you how you like to run them. Um, yeah. Let's. Pop over to their equipment. It's not too complicated. Warlords no. and hearth guards are mounted on horses. Warriors are on horses with composite bows. No options there either. And some levies with no special equipment, or they can have some bows. So, are you um, taking some some levy and which 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 kind of levy do you? Prefer, um, I think the first time I played them because of, because of um, not having enough miniatures, I think I took levy. Um, but really, um, after playing otherwise, I, I don't know any game that I would actually play the levy willingly. Okay. <laughs> you know, but with your other choices on there. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe if you you know if you knew the table was completely covered in forest, you might want the levy. But sure, well, that's interesting. We'll have to keep that in mind as we we go through the battle board. I know. A lot of these abilities are very specific on the troops that can benefit yes. from them. And unlike uh, the Mongols' cousins, the Huns, where they have a very, very good specific ability <laughs> for their levy. <laughs> I'm not necessarily seeing anything here. No, the, the Mongols, Mongols don't have it. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay, so you like to take warriors, hearth guards. Uh, what... What kind of split are are you um, using there? The way the way I I've been running them is um, uh, technically one and a half points of hearth guard, so a six pack, right? With the other half point paying for the camel drummer, and then uh, oh, four yeah. four points of warriors. Oh yeah, we got to talk about the camel drummer <laughs> for sure. I had to drop that in there. There's my yeah, next yeah, yeah. Uh, little thing here. So we got the camel drummer. He's been fact to be a yep. delicious half point which is uh, amazing. So he's just a generic uh, troop type that the Mongols can take. He's not a uh, mercenary or anything like that. Generates a Sagadai. He's got armor four, aggression one. So he's not a fighter, 
He's mounted on a camel, though. Always fun. little uh, protection <laughs> against those horses trying to hunt him down. Uh, oh, yeah. So that's annoying. He's got bodyguards and resilience one in addition to the horde rule. So he's kind of like a little mini hero that kind of hangs back. And he can use the horde once during each of his activation phases. When this rule is triggered, all friendly units mounted on horses within long of the drummer are activated. Mercenaries are not affected unless they have the loyal rule. And so it just says activated. So I think you could move, charge, rest, shoot, everything. Is that right? That is how I, it's been played and, and no complaints so far. Yeah. So um, for kind of an auto <laughs> include for a point. I don't I thought he was a pretty good deal for a point. Um, yeah, you could probably but, but, have somebody saying they'd rather have the bodies or something, but for a half point. Um, and generates a saga. Die. And he generates a saga. Die. And so with this, you can kind of load up your board with uh, crazy abilities. And then this guy just moves everybody either to, to the enemy or away. Uh, something like that. That's it. that's exactly it. It allows you to uh, not use your dice on activations, but to actually use them on your board more. Mm-hmm. You know, you do end up maybe a little bunched together with an L of the drummer, but that's still a lot of space. Yeah, that yeah. that's a that's a lot of room because uh, you just need one model within long to count as exactly. within long. Yep. So that's a very large area you can cover. No worries mm-hmm. there. So you have been liking. Uh, a six pack of hearth guards, so one point five points. Yep. Uh, half and, and, for him and the yeah. rest warriors. Yeah, and then the warriors, I usually break them down um, uh, odd numbers because of the bows, but I'll do uh, 11, 9, 7, 5. 11, 9, 7, 5. I like it. About the 32 still, but you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 11 pack of uh, bows is kind of makes people nervous. Mm-hmm. Free activation. And then as we'll get into the board, uh, that little five pack runs along with it. And that there's some abilities where you can slap a fatigue on a nearby unit to make something your big unit okay. is doing better. Gotta... And that's nice to have that little five pack. A little kind coordination of... between the troops. Very cool. Yep. All right. So that sounds good to me. Uh... Well, then, you know, I, I think uh, something you said in another episode back, but uh, a six pack of Hearth Guard is less tempting. I want to go and hammer with something versus like when you see the eight pack, that's kind of the target you want to go after six pack, maybe not as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little less, um, all eggs in one basket there. Um, so if they spend a lot of resources taking them out, eh, they're not going to get quite as a big a bang for the buck with just six versus eight. And all right. Well, up top on the board, Looks like the usual business. I don't. I don't see anything different yep. there. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing different there than I think almost all other boards. Okay. So we're gonna pop down to scorched earth. This is the. Uh, uh, I don't know. This is the ability. You read this ability, and you're like, hmm. I think I'll be playing Mongols now. Uh, <laughs> it, it's an ability that, um, you know, I, I think anybody who pulls the board out playing against the Mongols. You know, during deployment phase, if they miss that, they're like, "What? What? That's not right." Wood. Yeah, because you know they put woods in their own terrain. They're thinking, "Oh, good, they're mounted. I'll put woods up. I'll I'll throw I'll throw a unit of levy in the woods, or something like that." And you're like, "Okay, mm-hmm. thanks." So <laughs> this is a common die activation. Choose an area of terrain offering light cover within very short of one of your units of mounted warriors. So again, specific to the warriors, all units within that terrain piece suffer a fatigue. Also, that piece of terrain offers no cover for the rest of the game and counts as low terrain. So uh, it is limited to light cover. So the swamps and the rocky stuff can't be affected. But um, this could be the big the big field or the big woods uh, as well. You yeah. could get a lot of... A lot of enemies packed in there, uh, trying to avoid the calf. <laughs> yeah, fatigues. I have not uh, during Age of Manly. I was I have not had a chance to play against something like the Irish or or anything that uses a lot of the the, the woods and fields. So I was kind of kind of hoping I wanted to see how this was going to play with that, but I didn't have much luck with that. So mm-hmm. so far, 
<laughs> so yeah pretty cool ability maids you can you can shoot in um it doesn't count as as open terrain so your horsemen can't just run right. in there willy-nilly no. that 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 would be amazing um yeah. but at least you can shoot in and uh you know they're not going to be blocking on threes and and keep in mind that with the drummer um even if i'm first player limited to three dice in a scenario you know you could uh run a, a unit of warriors over there with you know like oh, one yeah. one with an activation and pop this first turn and run away again uh-huh so, so you're getting it pop this shoot you know shoot the guys and then run away yeah you're getting it done so yeah that's a great play to start the game just set the tone <laughs> don't even try to hide in these woods um that's cool so yeah i mean do you end up using this um during most game do you specifically have a terrain strategy built around this so are, are you um, only choosing light cover are you trying to tempt them by putting something in the middle I do, anything I, do. I, have, I have you know usually somebody wants to put woods out anyway and so why not for me to put woods and put it in my opponent's uh like zone mm -hmm. go ahead put something in it or it blocks you as much as me if it's something you don't want to use that's fine okay but you know if i start shooting you and you decide you want the cover well then now you've opened yourself up to that yeah so yeah and it's only like you said it's only a common die so you can definitely you know. squeeze it in nice little ability yeah. keeps uh keeps it fair you got to come out and play a little bit can't just hunker down um when you're up against the mongols so i think it's nice and themey and uh yeah interesting ability we don't have anything like that on any other board as far as i'm aware how would you think that would work against your pagan Ross? <laughs> or the pagan or the pagan peoples <laughs> pagan peoples yeah um it's an interesting question i would have to go back and look um that could very well stop the teleporting type ability it could be another game within a game with that. Um, yeah, I would have to go if back you, you, and look at the wording on that. And then they do have some yeah. a couple other abilities that are uh, interact with terrain. So I, I'd have to look at it. But yeah, it sounds really interesting because yeah. you could kind of preemptively That's, burn some stuff to stop me. I was going to say, yeah, you don't. Have, that, there ha doesn't have to be any units in the woods for me to burn it or fields. Mm -hmm. Is it just you just burn it? So yeah, like, you know. that, that's a good point doesn't doesn't require that so um i'd have to reference the pagan people's board but yeah it looks like potentially a nice little play there uh yeah. a lot of fun all right let's head on down to the next one we're looking at short range volley a melee or shooting ability place a fatigue on a friendly unit of warriors within short of your unit or the enemy unit so specific to the warriors again, the enemy must reroll every one of its defense dice, which cancels a hit. So I'm just trying to get a place for taking out in front of the unit of warriors. So you could put this on your own unit if they're warriors. Yep. If it's you have to put it on your own unit. It just where the, that unit has to be within short of your main. Oh, I see what you're it saying. It could be the yeah. unit, you know, activating yeah. the ability because they're yeah. you know, units are always counted as being within short of themselves. Um right. since it's Short of the enemy unit as well. That's that's actually quite a large uh, piece of space on the battlefield. Yes. Um, so it's really not that limiting. And if a unit no. engages in close combat and somebody withdraws short, and yeah, they're still within short, so um, you could no. use this one to follow up a, a prior no, and melee. It's, and there's only two dice, two commons. Yeah, so a little pricey here. Um, obviously, the more dice you're rolling, the bigger bang for your buck. So the six pack of Hearth Guard charging in with twelve dice, and that's one way. Or like I said, when I was doing the um, the idea of the eleven uh, warriors going up to shoot, and the little five pack running alongside of it, you shuffle the fatigue off to the uh, little five pack, and when you get to the bonus of what this die does, or what this ability does, enemy unit must reroll every one of its defense dice, which cancels a hit. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's good against shooting. Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes your opponent just rolls a crap load of fours, 
and you're just kind of scratching your head. But this will definitely get some shots through. Um, yeah. So the big war unit, we'll look at some other abilities. Is it easy to, yeah. to jack up and get additional shooting dice into um, one big can, volley or not? But I, I, mean, tend to, I tend to like just run around and punch a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other abilities. Um, you know, you could load up, a, you know, like three or four abilities into one move here on, on, as we get into some of these other ones. But like you were saying, the six-pack of hearth guard. You know, they could come up, and if, if you're just doing straight hearth guard 12 dice and then making the guy reroll defense, you know, and that's melee now, so mm -hmm. a lot more, you know. Okay. So you do take a fatigue. You have to have a unit kind of lined up, coordinate. It does take two dice. So are you making this happen every game? You, actually, um, the other thing that, that really works for this, and going back to the, the camel drummer, um, you know, you always have a, you get in that third, fourth turn of a, of a game and uh, you have a Warriors out there, you only have a two pack left because they've been in the, they've been hit or something. Oh, well, yeah. you, don't have to use, you don't have to use an activation dice to activate them because the drummer just does it. Mm -hmm. And you don't care about putting fatigue on them because there's only two Warriors, right? They're not going to be doing anything anymore. So you slough the fatigue off on them. That's a this. great point about that drummer activating because yeah. in most armies those little in theory it's kind of nice having those around usually for shenanigans but you just don't have that the dice typically to activate them um but with that drummer they can always be in the most annoying place possible and they're still popping <laughs> off their yeah. their shots towards the end of it uh you know after each time that's they true move. They, they're yeah, you, if it's a two-bag, they're still only throwing one die when they move up there, but mm -hmm. it's another one-die shot. Well, if the enemy's within medium, they shoot at the beginning and then yep. activate with the drummer for a move somewhere to get with the short-range volley as a victim for the fatigue, and then they, you know, they shoot again just for the heck of it. Uh, yeah, that's great. I like the picture you're painting there. Uh, <laughs> and then it becomes a tempting target for your opponent. They feel like they have to wipe it out because you're mm -hmm. just going to keep they gotta, that They got to spend their resources, and it's not really yep. costing you much. Ooh, I like the versatility there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep on going down. Armed Hordes. Okay. This takes any old die that you have. Right. It's a melee ability. Hearth Guards or Heroes only. So Warlord, the, the Camel Drummer, he is a hero, right? Yeah, I yes, think he is. So <laughs> you could... Pop this on them. Let's see if you want to. Reduce your armor by one to gain a plus one bonus to your attack dice. If you use a horse, which is the rare, you may reroll each of your attack dice, which did not score a hit. Oh, wow. Kind of a, a downside there by reducing yes. your armor by one. Um, it, yeah, specifically the hearth card, too. Hmm. Um, yeah, and it's this is one of those... Um... I tend to use the hearth, the hearth guard kind of after you've peppered somebody with some bows where they don't have much left in the unit. You really want to finish them off. Yeah, this might be more of a more of a finishing blow kind of move. Um, yeah, this is all with a plus one to hit and rerolling. It misses. With the rare, you'd be essentially if you have the rare, which seems yeah. good. I guess we'll we'll see if there's, there's other places the rare. But we'll get into it, but there's not a lot of. Um, rare requirements on this board mm -hmm. so, so it's always possible that yeah i mean one. that that's a huge a huge buff for using the rare re-rolling everything uh you could definitely oh, and man. if you combined it with if you combine it with the previous ability of the short range volley mm -hmm. where your opponent's got to re-roll every defensive dice that cancels a hit and you're re-rolling each of your attack dice that don't score a hit Ooh, first. baby that yeah that's a killer that's a killer attack right there yeah. Downside, reduce your armor by one. So are you, like, fatiguing the enemy up and then if, just jacking makes, up your armor you're, back up? You're, you're hoping, like, with a foot army, they're, they got to chase you down because otherwise you're just going to keep shooting them and running away, shooting them and run away. Mm -hmm. So they got to get some fatigue to get to you, you know? Uh, and it's also not bad against, like, elephants. Ooh, elephants. I like it. Shooting, shooting the elephants, you know, before you go in. Mm -hmm. Not sure you really want to go in because of the elephant thing, but you know you really have to take that elephant out. Got the rerolls. I don't know. Plus one to hit. I could. Mm. This is a juicy. I'm <laughs> thinking juicy. about uh, just the little suicide missile for Hearthguard. Yeah. Charge in. Uh, I see your gears turning. You there, could. Yeah. yeah. 
can probably wipe out a six pack of hearth guard in one swoop maybe i don't know oh yeah yeah uh, wait to get to some of these other abilities you'll see okay. there's, some, there's a couple other things in here. yeah we'll see how they this one combos with some other abilities yeah. but using any die on here is great yeah that's um, a, that's a, a the versatility of that is really good yeah i guess but it, this is not one of the ones that i would have every turn this is obviously something a little more one that has to be your hearth guards or your warlord yeah you have you to know? plan your attack run uh yeah. going in to maximize the benefits and minimize the downside and keep in mind with your warlord if your hearth guard are nearby and you can actually use the the um, bodyguards rule this arm boards is not so bad either okay Slough it off. you're gonna lose your armor take a few hits that you can't just use your resilience on you don't want to lose the warrior warlord you could slough off the hearth guard okay yeah if he goes in fresh he can absorb three yeah. you know if this is gonna end the game yeah be, be such yeah, a blow game. that it's just going to wipe them out. Uh, late yeah, game. Maybe you won't care. Not bad. Okay. And the drummer would effectively make him get in there for free. So. Uh, drummer. Such Imagine the drummer guy. and then the determination of the warlord. You can mm -hmm. do... That's uh, 24 inches across the table. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, yeah. All right, let's pop up to... the. This is probably... Uh, the ability with my favorite name, <laughs> the most oh, yeah. favorite name in any uh, of this, the the boards, uh, Hell for Leather. Oh, I love it. Once again, you can use any die on this one. It's a mounted unit, so it's, again, not going to be able to use on the levies. So I don't think we've run into a levy ability yet. No. After this melee, your unit must make a withdraw move of L. So it says must. So. Um, right. so whether, lose, whether you win or lose, you're, you're, you're making your move. If you use a rare, remove a fatigue from your unit after you withdraw. Oh, ooh, I like it. Uh, you yeah, got to use a rare yeah, for yeah. that one, yeah. Yeah, the idea would be to win the melee, so your opponent has to withdraw S, and then you're withdrawing L, and you lose the fatigue you just got from the melee. Yeah, 16 inches away. If you just use this on your warlord with uh, armed hordes, he gets away 16 inches away with uh, only two fatigue instead of three. This is awesome. So I love it. That rare. Ooh, yeah, that's worth it. Um, yeah, that's probably, the one place where you kind of want the rare. Mm -hmm. You know, mounted unit, loving it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is good. I think. I swear though. First edition Romans had something like this, and I really liked it. I may be hallucinating, but um, yeah, having the ability to move either away or even close, you know, you could be going pop a rare, you're moving on to your next target. Uh, well, it's, it does say withdraw, so you could argue that it has to be. Cause it's a oh, withdrawal. that's it true. Be yeah, right. so yeah. Uh, you're right. So it does have to follow the withdrawal rules. So now on the um, plus side of that, you're probably pulling back within range of your camel drummer for the next turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know. But oh, very cool. Yeah, great, great ability. You can use any any die on there. Yeah. Loving it. Um, yeah. There's a there's an ability that that uh, I combine that with that we'll get to a little farther down. Well, which which one is that? Uh, do, 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 which one is it? Where's the one that um, all my warriors get javelins in at the turn? Scourge of the Steps. Yep, Scourge of the Scourge Steps. Scourge of the Steps. So let's, we can jump down to that one. Yeah. Uh, so we're skipping over one for now, but Order's Ability uses a common or uncommon. Till the end of the turn, your warriors count as being equipped with javelins rather than composite bows, but may not be activated to rest or shoot so that right that is a now this, big yeah big commitment there Terry. <laughs> no it is but this ability comes in handy when uh, your opponent has some stuff that's that's anti-bow mm -hmm. right and so he loads up his board like say let's uh the vikings for example with the they're gonna exhaust anybody who shoots right well they load up that instead of their combat stuff and then you hit them with scourge of the steps so that mm. 11 pack of composite bow suddenly became 11 pack of javelin charging in. Okay. You know, granted your armor's still three, right? But but you went from 
you know, you're getting a plus one on all your attacks because it counts on that part. Yeah, so even you know, makes it a, a fair fight, uh, essentially, yes. and then it might even encourage them to close ranks if they if they can, you know, which reduces number of attacks on your low armor guys anyway. So you might be might be okay with that. Yeah, and then you combine that with hell for leather. You charge in with your javelins, and then you withdraw L. Yeah, I like it. That 11-pack of warriors going in. Um, they yeah. queue up one or two shooting abilities on their turn. And you know what? I'm flipping flipping the script. I'm going. <laughs> I think this is the one thing that um, uh, when I was up at the... We did the Traveling Warlord last July in Minneapolis, and uh, I played Monty. This is the one that... that, that flipped Monty out because he wasn't familiar with the Mongol board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Can't... That is a big... Uh, you can't rest or shoot with anything. Or at least, no, at least warriors. So Hearthguard heroes could rest, but... Um, yeah, you're going, you're going all out attack when, when this sucker's flipped right here. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. And then there's, you know... It's just we can combine it with you could do short range volley then also if you had the dice loaded up for going into that melee. Mm -hmm. So you go in with the plus one javelin and your opponent then has to reroll all the defensive dice that cancel a hit. It's interesting, you know? yeah. They might reconsider closing ranks if you have that yeah. one queued up. Which and if you want to, if you feel like kamikaze against a hearth, like say a mounted hearth guard, if you want a kamikaze. If you did scourge of the steps with the short range volley and the armed words, well, that's that's hearth guard. You can't do it with the. Mm -hmm. with the warriors but still you know going a kamikaze and go in on a mounted hearth guard unit that's out there he doesn't have a lot of combat stuff himself loaded up you're willing to throw away one of your warriors to take out hearth guard yeah now are you like guaranteed to use this every game you would say or do you go no, do you go no. games where you're just oh, i'm just gonna keep on plunking yeah, away no, with the this composite and ability. then you know of the heart totally card depends on, yep totally depends on what my opponent's doing okay. and what he's got you know this one this one's a i, I consider it even though it's order space i consider it sort of a reaction mm -hmm. you really need to there's no there's no reason i would like my opponent let's say my opponent whatever he's playing has a board clear there's no reason i would play this mm -hmm. but why you know one why would you want to go into melee if all you can do is shoot and run away right why would i give you victory points yeah. bad die roll <laughs> so you know <laughs> But but if your opponent's playing something where you know he's he's got something set up or or he's you know really anti bow and you want to do something, this is the thing. Very cool. Now the, the downside to this one is why I don't use it that often. It means all your warriors for the turn, not just a unit. All your warriors. Yes. So that. that makes it tough. Yeah, you have to think about because you might yeah, want to charge on one flank, but on the other flank you just want to keep keep shooting them up. So you kind of gotta. Right. commit to a specific course of action but i think it's it's cool and it's kind of themey um uh, where you know picture the camel drummer you know he starts beating a different you know it's the different uh tone you know the different notes and then all of them are like oh okay you know we're, we're gonna stop pretending to run away now and we're gonna charge in and start whooping up yeah and i actually i think of this as um if anything it's it could be more of a finishing move at the end of the game yeah exactly yeah you know because you're not going to um, charge into big fresh units i mean you're still armor yeah. three um but again, you know, you're taking again, some damage this is another one of those where you have that two or three pack of warriors sitting around that are that are within the, the camel drummer's range and, and you don't really want to do much else this turn you know you could camel drum you know use this and camel drum and send that three pack into something with javelins send them in. just trying to finish you know Especially, I, I think I, there was one game where I actually used, uh, I had a couple of things where I had like a three-pack, a five-pack of Warriors left kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I used this with the Camel Drummer to to basically machine gun the uh, Warlord. Let's go you know, and you go up. Yeah, especially if they're they're mounted or can't yeah. otherwise close ranks. Um, that little yeah, just, couple Javelin attacks with a plus one. Yeah, you're hitting on fours, fives. Yeah, um, and even if none of your shots get through, they get a fatigue at the end of the melee themselves. Mm -hmm. So you know, your opponent. So all right, I'm liking it. We're we're not uh, one dimensional here. We're mixing it up. Yep. You gotta be yeah. be careful. Your opponent can't just load up the shooting abilities. You're kind of uh, 
Yeah, they could get easily yeah. get burned if they don't pipe in a couple melee as well. Um, right. So. Oh yeah, we forgot one thing. This is actually um, with this in the order space. It's actually useful um, against um, the scenarios where you have to pick up uh, an object. You gotta beat the like the wagons or something in some of those scenarios. Oh Remember, yeah, um, desecration where you're going against the uh, yeah. objectives. A lot of those you can't pop saga abilities, but your equipment. Yep. You're gonna go one with a plus it, one, handy. It, it, and if you shoot them, it's not really, you know, it's a lot harder to shoot them up yep. and all that stuff. But yeah. Very cool. Well, we skipped over the bow and the lance, so we'll head up to that one. This yeah. is an uncommon activation ability for the warriors. So activate a unit for a move, which generates no fatigue. So, you know, wait till you do the camel drumming first, and then you'll pop this one, yep. sounds like. Your opponent may not use this unit's fatigue during this activation, so they can't shorten it or cancel it outright. If this unit ends its move more than very short from one of your hearth guard units, it takes three fatigue. Oh, okay. So there's a significant downside there if uh, yeah. you do not. Yeah, but what you do with this, this is the, you're talking about thematic, this is this is an ability that I, I believe I've used every game, if not every turn, mm -hmm. right? Because you camel drummer drums, warriors charge across the table, use their composite bow, you pop this, they come back to the hearth guard. Mm -hmm. Go in range. Right, so. Yeah, we've all played those games. They come across, shoot, they come back, and look at that. No yeah. fatigue at the end of it. Gosh, damn yeah. it. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So no fatigue. Is the big downside. They kind of just, when they turn around, they're yeah. looking for the hearth guards. They're like, where are they? Where are they? Let's. You know, they're following the battle plan. So once the hearth guards are gone, it's going to reduce the uh, utility of this quite a bit. I guess if you already have two um, fatigues and you need to get the heck out of there, you know. It's not bad either. Um, now, yeah. Also keep in mind, late game, when you have like that one unit of hearth, uh, one man hearth guard running around, he still counts as this. Yeah, he's still, he's still got a still run back. You know, he's still got a purpose. Of, yeah, he's the yeah, rallying generates point. Generates saga die and rallies this. Now, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I like to do, giving away the secrets here, but uh, with the camel drummer drums, right? Mm -hmm. You send, let's say, the eleven pack across the board, the five pack across the board, and your warlord with them. Right? Okay. All three of those, you're targeting one unit basically, right? I'll get the Warlord and the five pack. You don't have to get quite as close, just close enough to your 11 pack. But uh, you pop that short range volley, right? To put a fatigue on the five pack. So your opponent, you're going to shoot your opponent. He's going to reroll his defensive dice, mm -hmm. right? You could pop bow and the lance at the end of that. So that 11 pack then runs back when they're done. Your Warlord can we obey the five pack with one fatigue to run back. If your opponent wants to shorten it, they can. But remember, you're probably not that close to your to the enemy at that point anyway. Mm -hmm. And then your warlord uses his determination to run back. He gets a fatigue at the end of it, but everybody, you know, ran out and ran back Ooh, for eleven right. for eleven dice for eleven dice of bow that your opponent has to re-roll all of his uh, yeah uh, defensive dice that cancel to hit. So you had just within this little combat, you had six moves, but it only costs a single uncommon die. Three if you count the short range volley. Common uh, just for the activation, yeah. You know, oh yeah, just for the. Activation. It's nice if you use that, but not. Yeah, quite, that's, I, I guess. And and we talked about the mail uh, the turn or scenarios where you have uh, three dice to start the first turn. You go first, and you get a <gasps> common and two uncommons. Not not Ooh. a hard thing to get on a die roll, right? Ooh, you, you get this on the first turn. Yeah, you could burn some stuff or run over, uh, pepper something up. You know, depending on the order. Yeah, you, know, you save your your big units. You put down half your units. They put all their units out. You know they could put a unit of mounted hearth guard or something on the line, and you know, yeah, go for it. Get everybody Three over shot. there. Yeah. Take your six shots. They're re-rolling successful blocks. Run back. They start the game yeah. with, uh, <laughs> you know, instead of a six pack of hearth guard three, <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna change the course of the game. Uh, a lot of people like to uh, put that unit of levy out there to kind of screen their stuff. Mm -hmm. Go go up and throw eleven dice, eleven eleven dice of bow shots at a levy unit mm -hmm. for nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean it's costly. Like I said, no, no dice at all. Yeah, it's it's not a bad one at all. 
All right, cool. All right, let's head over to that final column, Master of Men. Melee ability takes an uncommon or a common. If your unit is within medium of your warlord or your war drummer, gain four attack or defense dice or a mix of both. So very cool that it's either either or. Uh, those guys can yes. cover a lot of area. Um, they should be able to use this on themselves. And I guess this is the first ability that could be actually be used on Levy. Um, so. Could. Uh, <laughs> if you had Levy. Yeah. Wow. Um, this is awesome. Four, had, four dice for a common. That's, that's yeah. pretty good. The average is and if, three. Again, if you combine that with Scourge of the Steps, earlier we have the Javelin. All, all your warriors have Javelins. Mm -hmm. And you, you activate them and your Warlord goes up with. You know, your warlord just has to be within M, so your warlord's close to L away from the enemy. Mm -hmm. Or no, he'd still be M away because you're going to go into melee with this one. You're going to, then you still do the same thing where you can pop the hell for leather or something afterward, or, you know, where you're going to pull back from the melee, and then your warlord will still use determination to pull himself back afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you'd be, you know, if you're worried about dropping that armor, if you did like, uh, or you were their hearth guard, if you did that armed hordes. Drop the armor, but then give yourself four defensive dice. Yeah, this wanted. definitely goes a long way towards making me comfortable popping that ability. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it, a lot of the stuff on the Mongol board um, is like you want to combine it a little bit. It's not like you have to have a ton of stuff together, but they do all kind of work together. Mm -hmm. One or two abilities for one thing, but yeah. This is cool. Um, yeah, and since this is the Warlord or the, the Drummer, I mean, you could probably get your entire army if you if you just want to go pure defense. You go over, do all your business, you retreat. You could probably get every unit within medium of your warlord or war drummer. So when they come across and, you know, they overextend to try to get a unit, uh, you know, you're ready for them with four defense dice or, you know, you could go for attack, kind of flip it if yes. you want. Um, the fact that you can do both is, is awesome. This is great, great ability. Or mix. You want two mm -hmm. and two, you know, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, probably one you're using most, most turns, most games. It's, it's uh, definitely, and that's that gets used a lot. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have melee at some point, most of the time on the defensive end, but yeah, still very much. Very cool. All right, human shields. All right, this is probably the the one levy ability. I think <laughs> orders or orders reaction until the end of the turn. Your hearth guards get the bodyguard special rule, and you remove figures from your warriors or levies when using the bodyguard special rule. So right. you probably want to use levies, but they're slow. They're slow guys. They're not gonna be able to keep up. I'm guessing is the problem. Um, you're frequently gonna be running into, but. I I, I don't know. I, this is awesome, awesome ability. <laughs> it's it's another one of those that um, when you have that two two or three man warrior unit near the end of the game left over, right? Mm -hmm. And it gets activated with the drummer. Your hearth guard goes into to melee. You could you know pop human shields on the order's turn, you know, um, and then you could do you could finally do that armed hordes, yeah. right? You can reduce your armor by Ooh, one to get a plus one. Yeah, I have no fear and then, then you, of using armor. Then you're going to kill off the two or three pack of warrior that you have there. But well, you leave, you leave the one guy there, yeah, just to be yeah. annoying. Um, yeah, this is awesome. I love that it's in orders or orders reaction. So it lasts the whole turn. It's not just one melee. Right. So or you could kind of daisy chain. You know, you have your warriors move up and, you know, do one or two different combats with the hearth guard, you know, if, um, if you're dishing out 12 attacks per hit, you could kind of do multiple charges if you were so inclined and, uh, you know, you're just shunting all the hits onto the, the warriors that are standing by. Uh, very oh, definitely. Um, and, and like, you, uh, you know, late game or, or your opponent has one unit that's going to run across the board and try to take your drummer out. Mm -hmm. Kind of string your hearth guard up as a screen in front of the drummer. Okay. Throw some warriors around him. You know? Yeah, so I don't know if you know the answer to this or if it's referenced specifically. Um, can you have your warlord take the hits when he's in combat? He shunts them to the hearth guards, and then the hearth guards shunt them to the warriors well, or levies. I Is there. Don't 
I, I assume that's not, and I don't, it has nothing to do specifically with the Mongols, but I thought there were some other abilities out there where, like, if a unit, like, you can't go take a unit from resilience and shrug it off, or bodyguards. And shrug yeah, it off you'd have to. Resilience, they have, they have to take it. They can't shrug it. Okay. As resilience. So you so assuming. I've always played it where if he takes it, that means the warriors take, take the hit. Yeah, you'd have to go and read all the verbiage. Uh, the bodyguards yeah. rule and all those abilities. Uh, I didn't know if they just mentioned that, you know, in that little. No, again, blurb. I, and I don't, I've used this, but not that often, because um, it's again, it's a kind of a situational. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the right, right position, right time, right mood. <laughs> you know, gauging how the how the the ebb and flow of the battle is going. Do you need this? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, good, good ability, well worth. Uh, the victory points you're saving shunting uh, yeah. shunting damage there so uh yeah i like it let's go down to predators orders uh, ability choose one of your units of hearth guards they count as being equipped with composite bows until the start of your next turn so this is kind of the flip of scourge of the the steps here you are yep. uh giving your unit composite bow, you know, they were equipped with nothing to begin with. And um, if you just got one unit or, or two, you get to choose it specifically. There's no other limitations. Um, yeah, you got another another shooting unit uh, yeah, on hand for and uncommon. Yeah, and so, they're, so they're, they're shooting aggressions 1-1, one, one, right? So you're looking at six-pack of hearth guard. There's six dice. Mm-hmm. So it is until the start of your next turn. So if, if the enemy can That's somehow get to them, you know, right. there'll be uh, armor four and melee. But um, but maybe that ability before that would be useful if you were going to do this. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like two human it. shields and then predators. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are you... It's an uncommon die, I guess. How does how does this factor into the overall plan? Are you getting enough shooting from your regular warriors, or yeah, are so you flipping the old, these guys yeah, the into old, the fray? The, the only time I use I've used this I think is late game again. You know where you've hmm. you kind of got the edge, or you're against a really slow opponent. You know, somebody an all foot army, for instance, right? Hmm. And you just want some more shooting. Where your, your hearth guard's really not going to do much of anything besides shoot as well. You know, you could you could throw a die on there. If, you have an extra one every turn since you have the drummer to activate them you know yeah it's orders ability uncommon so you'll probably have an uncommon late game and you can just shoot immediately and then use the drummer to get the heck out of there so you still accomplish something even if you don't the, want to engage in close combat the only time that pre, pre playing anybody that i've actually looked at that ability a lot is is if you run up against elephants mm, right. yeah you say, well, you I'm, wanna, not, I'm not gonna, you, I'm not gonna fight you. Yet. So, no. I'll, I'll you, just you have, you know, you have four units of warriors with bows, and you then you could pop one ability over there and have one unit of hearth guard it, in my build. Um, so you'd have five units with bows, and you could just take your turn shooting one elephant, and hopefully get finally get enough on it that you kill it without having to get into. Terry, you really it. focused on killing these elephants. <laughs> Did you have a bad experience? Did elephant touch you? I have not. <laughs> yeah, funny. I have not actually played. Elephants with my Mongols yet, um, and and they make me nervous. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so it won't come up <laughs> unless it's in all all ages. You know, we're looking yeah. at the Sassanids or the uh, even earlier. He, he, Hannibal had almost everybody. Yeah, no, that, that is but, a you know. uh, yeah, definitely a period of time inter uh, inter time period battle there, a couple thousand years for that one to happen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is. This is cool ability. I really like saga abilities that let you shoot. And uh, if this just gives you the equipment to shoot, that's good enough for me. So Yeah. I like it. And, and like I said, six dice, not a bad shooting attack. All right. We got to the last one here. You may reroll each of your defense dice, which did not cancel a hit. So warriors only. Mm -hmm. So if you're running levy, you just <laughs> you can use some uh, attack or defense dice on them, and you can kill them. But otherwise, you, they're not really. Um, yeah, you, you see why there's not much of a reason to take levy on the in the Mongol build. Um, <laughs> um, but um, th 
three common dice, you, you, and I, I do this a lot, evasive maneuvers with the short range volley. Mm -hmm. Right, you're doing three common dice. So this is, so, uh, yeah, uh, common dice, melee, shooting reaction, warriors only, reroll, each year defense dice. So, yeah. So I make my opponent do thinks a short range volley, reroll any of his defense dice that do cancel a hit. And mm -hmm. then I reroll any of mine that fail to cancel the hit. Okay. So this goes a long way towards improving survivability. And if you course, combo yeah. with some defense dice, that that's the ultimate. Rerolls for defense dice. I've had some bad Anglo Dane rolls <laughs> where yeah. Well, I've got rerolls, <laughs> I'm good. And oh, I failed Masters. them all. Oh, I Masters. failed them all again. Uh, yeah. so having Ma some defense dice. Masters of men. Masters of Men, throw four four defensive dice in there. Is that four common now? You have to four common dice and you can do that? Mm -hmm. Make your opponent reroll all of his, reroll all of yours, and throw in four defensive dice. Okay. Well, I can see you. It's interesting here with the limitations, because um, yeah. you would definitely combo that with armed hordes with Hearthguard, but this is a warriors-only activation. So, um, yeah, they're really... Cutting down on the the combos Unlike, here, which is interesting. Yeah, part of what the, the overall feel that I've gotten from from the Mongol board in, in the game is is the warriors are your your work workhorses in, mm -hmm. in the sport, and your hearth, your hearth guard are your support of all things. Whether they're just kind of morale support in that uh, the bow and the lands, you got to come back to them, you know, for free. Don't take any fatigue, um, but you save that hearth guard for the late late the game punches. And the warriors are doing all the work during it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So overall, this is a it's an interesting board. I think it would, it's definitely more of a a veteran players board because mm -hmm. like two of these abilities, predators, scores of the steps, or you're just changing out equipment options. Yeah. So, like you have to know the saga fundamentals of when the certain equipment is preferable to your original equipment. And if you don't have a lot of games under your belt, you you might be shooting yourself in the foot. And you're spending your resources to do this, and you could, uh, you know, be charging in with your warriors when you should still be, you know, shooting with your composite bows. Um, and you know, the human shields ability is really cool, but I don't know. You could, I think, you could still yeah. get in trouble with that one, and kind of do yep. unwise things, and you're losing warriors wholesale to accomplish something you know it's kind it of be, free you can very, yeah there's a cost very specific to a scenario you know for you to actually want to use a few of these abilities um mm -hmm. but you know it, it's it's um the camel drummer and then the old muhammad ali you know uh, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee that's kind of the mongol the mongol board here um the, the the biggest thing for anybody playing that i that i forgot the first couple of times i played them because i was so so excited and fascinated by that camel drummer is the uh you can maneuver first then use the camel drummer granted yeah. you get a fatigue for that second move but you could literally deploy your army on one side of the board say you're the first player your opponent deploys his over there to counter mm -hmm. it and that when you go first for for think about this for no dice your entire mountain army is going to move 24 as you move l as part of your uh maneuver and then drummer drums again and you move another l so you're going to mm -hmm. swing completely across the other side, you know, on your, your deployment zone, I mean, for the four foot wide, you can screen all the way to the other side. Yeah, you start at the middle and you first turn, you end up on the left side or the right side and they're uh, scratching, scratching their noodle, trying to figure out yeah. what the heck they're going to do. It, uh, it, it allows you to look in really you have to have to look at deployment, your opponent's deployment and decide if there's an edge or something there that you really want to go focus on. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can maneuver over to the side. He puts all levy on one side. You know, levy, no bow, levy, but troops. You really want to go hammer that. That you can slide over there, and then your opponent on his turn is going to have to use all of his saga dice to do a lot of maneuver, mm -hmm. where you don't have to worry about saga dice. So you could still start loading the board up. Yeah, Let's baby. Make make him make him react to your reaction. So you're moving over, shooting up, pulling back. Primarily, is that how it's going for the first that, one, two, three yeah. turns? Just kind of waiting yep. for them to get desperate and start that's, that's scratching exactly their neck. It. What am I going to do? Um, 
I've done the thing. I've done the thing around the. You know, usually when the first turn, when you only have three dice, there's there's not much you can do. But with the Mongol board and that drummer, you can actually go across and, like I said, throw eleven shots on something and pull mm-hmm. back. You know, your opponent may make all the saves because it's you know yep. you don't have everything set up correctly, but you know it still makes them nervous. You're kind of <laughs> shooting, rolling dice, seeing what happens. You know, yeah. seeing which units. You know, they get a bad roll, and uh, you know, four four warriors go down or something. You're like, mm, okay, well, I see. I'll yeah. be concentrating on that unit next turn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, focus on anybody. Where you know, a lot of people like to run like six pack of levies just to get saga dice. Throw units out there. Shoot one. Mm-hmm. All you need to do is shoot one levy. Ooh, I like it. On. Yeah, that little four pack. I hate. I hate. Yeah. I, I never <laughs> run that little four pack, but uh, my opponents do frequently. And uh, you know, just four being able to run over yeah. pink. Plink that guy yep. out and get away scot free. Would love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's nice. So yeah. yeah, I would say this is a great kind of pitched battle board. Um, feasting and pillaging, ambush. What's the the game plan there? Where you have to grab some objectives, and they're gonna, you know, basically yeah. if, if your horsemen get it, you're you kind of almost can't even move. Uh, you're reduced to short. You take a fatigue every time you move. Yeah. One of the things that uh, we didn't talk about that uh, the overall concept is is your warlord besides that masters of men one ability mm-hmm. your warlord's not that key for for the mongol board there's nothing you know it, it, everything else that you're, you can do exactly what your warlord does with the exception of a we obey mm-hmm. right or the masters of men so on those kind of things it's not so bad to have your warlord end up with the with the baggage so he goes yeah yeah he's armor yeah. five you go yeah. in, take out the baggage, and just kind of hunker down with it. I guess otherwise so you're kind of just even waiting if he to gets grab it. Away, turn six, yeah, probably. Even, even if he gets far enough away from the camel drummer, he has determination, so at least he can do that one, one move. Mm-hmm. You know, I know he's limited on his move, but he can at least do it. You know, versus leaving a warrior unit out there that gets it. And now you, oh, they're out of range of the drummer. Do I have to use a die mm-hmm. to maneuver them? And this way you could at least that's really have interesting um uh, are you using uh the fireforge plastic mongols for your your troops here? all the ones that i have currently yeah the the fireforge plastic uh, box sets i did for for the warriors and the and the hearth guard i mean the way i've done them is uh obviously all the warriors the ones with bows hearth guard have swords and spears yeah that works out um, good you don't have to and i picked up the the special. i think it's um Kubla Khan, the resin from Fireforge for the Warlord. Okay. And I have a, I believe it's a Gripping Beast uh, Camel Drummer. Gripping Beast Camel Drummer. I think it's, yeah, I think it's Gripping Beast at the Camel Drummer. Yeah. I hope I didn't. One camel. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you ever, have you thought about adding any mercs or anything? Anything catch your eye here? I mean, I did. Probably... And it's actually, yeah. Is it, is it guides or scouts, the ones that, oh, uh, they can yeah. Get and then you can start running through the terrain. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, good. Like the, yeah, a lot of the, times yeah. the uh, marks will let you do something you can't normally do, but you're going to bring the marks that just lets you do more of what you do. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, uh, I guess it really would depend on what what your opponent is playing or how how the terrain gets set up. But you can't decide; you have to decide on the mark beforehand. But you know, if you know you're going to play against like something like the Irish, for instance, where you know there's going to be lots of woods, mm-hmm. that mark would not be bad. We can just keep running through the woods. Yeah, I think that's a good all comers kind of choice. Uh, safe play. Those guys are. It's a it's a good unit. Um, yeah, they won't be. They they take care of themselves. Yeah. I and I can't. I don't have the book right in front of me. I can't remember what um, what the other uh, merc options were for the the Mongols. I mean, I don't. I don't know. If Western Knights was op- was an option. Probably um, pretty doubtful. Need that if you want some more heavy punch, you know, yeah. or something like that. But that's, okay. I can't think of much else. You know yeah, what I mean? That's cool. I mean, the Camel Drummer is cool enough. I mean, when you're taking scouts, then you have one less unit that's going to benefit from those drums. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your movement and I'd have activation. To look at the rule. I'd have to look at the rule. I mean, if I took uh, a merc unit that was mounted, does the Camel Drummer affect them? Because it says... I don't think loyal was in the wording of the camel drummer, was it? It was just the uh, all. all uh, I think I think it is. I, I think it's okay. loyal, only loyal mercs. 
So mo okay. most of them wouldn't be affected yeah. um, by that darn old camel drummer. Now, do people try to assassinate that guy? Or... That's, uh, I believe, how I lost uh, Fimble Winter was. Uh, oh, no. Andrew, the Andrew, Normans Andrew with charged the, out. Uh, Eight pack of Norman Hearth, uh, Hearth Guard. Yeah, he he. I think he double moved or or moved and did the ability where he can charge with no fatigue and just to angle his way around and mm -hmm. and get at the camel drummer. Okay. You know? Yeah, he's a little squishy. Uh, yeah, they, there, but the whole I don't Mongol know if you had Masters of Men. Yeah, the uh, whole Mongol army, with the exception of of the Hearth Guard, is a little on the squishy side because you know those warriors uh, are all tree tree. Yeah, they're all yeah. they're all squishy. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just guard him well, I guess, is the moral of the story there. So do you, yep. do you have fun playing the Mongols? I do, I do. I, I feel the games, um, kind of move a little faster just because I'm moving, you know, and you're mounted, the whole army's mounted, so you're moving, like I said, L, or if you do maneuver in the Camel Drummer, you're moving L plus L yeah. across the table, you know, and then you can pull back. There's, you know, that's a nice thing. Some, a lot of their stuff is about... You know, doing something and moving again. That that center row there. You know, help for leather, the bow and the lance. Yeah. You know. I could see that because you definitely, you have your game plan going in. And uh, you know what you're going to do on your turn. And uh, yeah. it's kind of up to them to kind of throw you off. Uh, but, you know, it's <laughs> you got a lot of movement, a lot of speed. It's, <laughs> it's tricky. It is. And it's, and, you know, and like I said, uh, you get to use a lot of the abilities on the Mongol board because you don't need the dice for activations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I know. think that's really cool. Um, all right. And they don't need, as we talked about, they don't. There's, there's no ability out there that's just a rare. There's some abilities that, that I think there's. Look at the board. There's three abilities that you can, that there's uh, that rare can be on. Two of the three give you a little extra if you use the rare. Yeah, but, that's cool. The, yeah, you're not. Yeah. Absolutely, counting on a rare, for example, to switch the equipment to javelins or something, you know, no. would make a big difference if you needed a rare to to flip that one. And you're, you know, do you have a game where it's just not coming or something, you know? Um, so yeah, I like boards that aren't dependent on the rare. Or anything. That, that hell for leather is the only one where you really do kind of like the rare. If mm -hmm. You're gonna go into melee. You like that idea of pulling a fatigue off of it when he comes back the full L. So that's you know, where the, it, the first rare is going to go, Hell for Leather? Yeah, well, assuming you think you're going to be some melee. Mm -hmm. But remember, I mean, that's a melee thing, so you can actually do it even on the defensive. Ooh, that's true. Yeah, your opponent comes in. I'll see ya. You know, <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know. Um, but like I said, the overall strategy I've been, since I've been playing the Mongols is you go over and you, you, you shoot a lot of arrows over, do something quick. And you making your opponent react to you all mm -hmm. your movement. They they have to do something. They know they can't just hunker down and sit there. Absolutely. It's gonna, get, it's gonna get shot up. So they end up overextending somehow because they have to use all or their board's not filled up very good. They end up using all their dice for activations. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you get to go in and do stuff. So it's it, I kind of enjoy having my board full and my opponent not having much on their board. I kind Absolutely. Of <laughs> Awesome. Well, I thank you for coming on, Terry, sharing your knowledge with us. It's much appreciated. And, no problem. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you having me on there, filling in uh, some of these very important people you've had in these seats in the past. Oh, so yeah, feel yeah. You're, you're, feel you're, honored that you let me on. Here. I one, for sure. Um, yeah, I know you play a lot of Saga, so at some point maybe we'll have you back for uh, a oh. different war band. But uh, I'll let you off the leash for now. Let you get back <laughs> to the, the rest of your evening here. Hope you have a good night. And, okay. uh, yeah, I'll check everyone else later. If you got right. um, any comments below, if you disagree with Terry or my assessment of these abilities, let me know. If we forgot about some kind of clever combo, let us know. And if you if you do like to run the levees, I'd be curious uh, which yes. which ones you do like and uh you know what kind of success you've had with those levies so anyways that's it for now guys i will check you later bye-bye
like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Thursday Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.